Hey internet, good morning. Well, it's a very chilly January 15th, 14th. It's cold anyway. And uh, I'm doing this video this morning because of the interest yesterday's video generated. The So I'd put together the uh, video of the 12 month um, restoration on the 550 and uh, the amount of emails that I've had private message emails overnight is just compelled me to come on and sort of do a bit of a catch-up really so uh, you know where have I been it's just been really busy winter's not the best time for doing restorations as you guys will know it's freezing cold in the garage and you know you can put the heaters on and what have you but you know it remains cold so you're either going to watch those electricity bills going up with the price of everything at the moment whilst you're trying to heat the garage but you're having the door open and closed all the time so it's a real waste of time but anyway so I paused my videos uh what was it August last year I think uh, because of the uh, need to devote some time and effort to my fledgling IT business which is going okay actually I always do some more customers but uh, you know hey ho uh, it'll grow organically but anyway so as I say I felt compelled really to come on and explain you know what's been going on where I've been and, and what have you the um, emails were a lot of them were asking well what are you doing you know what's your next project where have you been all that sort of stuff really and so uh what is my next project going to be at the moment i i don't know i really don't know uh, one of the things that surprised me with youtube is i thought when i stopped doing the weekly videos as i was doing uh, which as i've said before and anybody who does the youtube content knows just how much time it takes uh, you know, it's not just doing the work, it's doing all the video editing afterwards and putting the music to it and doing all of that and then getting it uploaded. It takes quite a long time. So it's not just, uh, you know, a quick thing. It certainly isn't for me anyway. Anyway, so uh, I, the thing that surprises me with YouTube is I thought when I stopped doing the videos that my views, my hours of viewing would just stop. But boy, oh boy, it hasn't. Uh, I'm still picking up subscribers, which is brilliant, and anybody who's new, uh, really, you're very welcome. I hope you've been enjoying the uh, videos that are on the channel. I mean, there's well over 100 videos, so uh, there's a lot of content to look at. Uh, but the thing that's, you know, one of the other things that surprises me is just the viewing hours. You know, when you first start off with YouTube, it's very much, you know, you need a thousand viewing hours before you can... I don't know, I can't remember, but you know, you need a thousand hour viewing hours and you're thinking, God, how am I going to get a thousand viewing hours? But the channel is still getting tons of viewing hours uh, all on its own. It just sits there and people are watching the videos, which is great. And I'm really pleased that people are getting enjoyment from them. But it's, like I say, it's just a surprise. I think uh, the unexpected star or certainly one of the unexpected stars, content-wise, has got to go to the Transalp. The amount of love the Transalp video gets. I mean, I did one video, and it was that show and tell of the Transalp, and the amount of people that email saying, oh, God, I used to have one of them. I really wish I'd still got mine. Uh, I've just bought a PDO6. I've, I've bought one, and it's this, that, and the other. I've bought a year 2001, and I love it. You know, it... It just, it was really surprising. I mean, I thought the Transalp was a bit marmite as a bike. I mean, I love the Transalp. I've said to you before, I grew up with a big poster of the Transalp on my bedroom wall, wall uh, Honda, official Honda uh, poster. And uh, I loved it. Uh, and I always thought, God, I'm gonna have one of those one day. And I never did. And then years later, I mean, you know, I've, I've got the PDO6 now, the blue and white one, and I've had it for a few years, and I love it, and I just don't think I'll ever sell it. It's just a great, great bike. But a lot of, they, they didn't really, you know, if you read up on them, they never really took off in this country. They were big in Europe, um, but UK market, not so much. So 
they're now quite difficult to get hold of, certainly the early ones. I mean, mine's a German import, and uh, but it was imported from Germany back in the 90s. So it was quite new when it was imported, really. And it hasn't done a load of miles. I mean, it's 50,000 kilometres or something like that. Uh, which, you know, for a 30-odd-year-old bike, it's a D range, so it's 1987. It's, you know, uh, hardly anything, really. And the engines are just bulletproof. It's a lovely bike. But anyway, you know, I did that restoration ages ago, much before I even thought about doing the YouTube channel. And... It's just it just gets lots of love. So, you know, I suppose back to that next question, what's my next project gonna be? Well, if I'm going after subscribers and viewing hours, I suppose, it'd have to be the Trans Alp. Um I mean the bodywork's pretty good. Uh certainly the tank uh is the side panels could do a bit of work, there's a couple of cracks and breaks and certainly the front fairing could. But you know, I think it would be one of those where I'd want somebody like Dream Machine to do the paintwork because it's just I mean it looks really good now and I'd want it to be better than it is now certainly the frame could do the painting again but you know whatever um, so but yeah you know if you think it's had uh, it's right I keep looking down at my notes um, it's had the Transalp video has had just under a thousand views in the last month you know, considering the uh, video was released in June 22, uh, I think that's amazing. You know, so there's obviously a lot of following for the Trans Alp. So if you are a Trans Alp lover, power to you. We'll have to do something with it. What's happened since the uh, last videos? Not a great deal. I can't remember where we were up to, but I, so I sold the nice, tidy 400 GPZ 400R. That went. I sold the 400 track bike, that's gone, uh, and it really was just a case of trying to make some room in the garage, and I've got a bit of room now, uh, I've, I'm down to four bikes, which uh, probably, you know, it's probably more than I need, but you know, um, maybe I need another one, or maybe I should just get on and do the ones that I've got really. Let's look at what's under the sheets. So, if you remember, we've still got a lovely blue and white GPZ 600R. Haven't turned a uh, wheel, uh, well, you know, months. Let me just get some keys. So, yeah, it hasn't turned a wheel. So there's a bit, a bit of life in the battery. I don't think it's going to start, but you know, not to worry. But yeah, so obviously we've got this one to do as a project still. Um, We've got the lovely RD350 LC, but that doesn't need anything doing to it. it, just needs some attention cleaning, probably. So that's not a, a viable option. And we've got the lovely star of yesterday's video, lovely GPZ 550 or Z550, uh, as I'll be corrected, no doubt. But yeah, so that's. Uh, waiting to have a tyre on it and get it back on the road really. It's not going on the road until summer, but it's pretty much done. Then of course we've got the Trans Alp. Uh, again, I mean it's filthy dirty. Uh, I didn't put a cover on it for some reason. I think it was because it needed cleaning. And again, it hasn't turned the wheel uh, for months. A 
a uh, flat battery, so I think we all expected that. But yeah, so again, you know, should I do something with this? Maybe, maybe I should. There you go, for those that have missed him, Mr. Oscar, who's, as usual, gagging to get in or out. I mean, just look at it though. Dreary as you like. Lovely and horrible and wet and cold. Damp. You know, and if I, if I wanted to just sort of uh, pick up where I left off, um, we've still got all of this. Bring the camera over. Bit. Yeah, we've still got all of this. You know, uh, panel work off the, well, it's the spare panel work, really, off the uh, GPZ600R. So I've got a ton of stuff there to do. You know, the mud guard and stuff that I never got around to doing. And of course, the lovely fuel tank, which I had um, chemically stripped. Uh, and uh, I got as far as getting a bit of primer on, so there was no rust, really. But yeah, so, you know, we've got tons of stuff to do. So, that's it really. I do apologise. I know I've waffled on far too long, as I always do. But I just felt um, that I had to acknowledge some of the emails that I've had overnight and uh, explain where we're going with the channel, if anywhere. And I think that come spring, so March time really, when the weather's a little bit warmer, we can sort of get back on track and maybe, you know, start uh, start getting something done. At the moment, I don't know what, what to do. I don't know whether to go with the 600, uh, the GPZ600R, uh, which I'm sure Jason would prefer me to do, or, you know, uh, maybe do something on the Transalp, or, I don't know, maybe buy another one uh, as something else. My wife keeps asking me to get a old British bike and uh, do something with that, but... I don't know, I've never even owned an old British bike, so uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. Anyway, so that's it. Thanks very much for sticking with me, and thanks very much for all of the comments and views that uh, have been posted and uh, the likes. Uh, since August of last year, really, when I mothballed the channel, whilst I uh, didn't have enough time to, you know, give it any attention. So, uh, you know, I definitely will try and get back on track. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, in the spring. So uh, thanks very much. Stay with me. Okay, see you soon. Bye.